Good morning guys. This is my second video about net scalar load balancing. It's based on my first one, so you have to watch my first first. I'm Johannes Nortz, I'm a Citrix trainer, technical evangelist, consultant from Austria. I click into traffic management and load balancing. The first thing I will look at is the server. So I will select, let's say, the green server click edit there's not much to do so you see it may be based on IP address or on a domain name I may change the IP address or the domain name at any time so let's change it change it back and give a comment that's basically everything I don't want to go into traffic domains it's, it's very limited use for most of them. so next I will look into service groups created the service group last time, open it up, so you see there are some settings, you see there's health monitoring turned on, for example, some more, this is summary, if I click on edit, we see a summary again, so you see it's up, and there are three group members in it, these are my three servers, bound into it. So next I would click the pen, uh, to edit the settings of the service so you see all settings are grayed out so you can change the protocol the name but I may make the service cacheable turn off health monitoring or app flow logging next I click on thresholds and timeouts then set the maximum bandwidth the maximum of monitors to be down the maximum number of requests or the maximum number of clients the server idle timeout of course, so this is a server-side TCP connection. The next settings I want to go into are in settings. So there is sure connect search protection. There is use client IP address. Use client IP address is in combination with a client idle timeout. So this is a timeout for client connections. There is TCP buffering, HTTP compression, and a client IP address I could insert into the HTTP header. So the HTTP header in this case would be forwarded for. I could have done exactly the same thing using services. So if I look at the services, same thing. So there are details in it. If I click on edit, they are the same properties. So I personally prefer using service groups over services because uh, it's easier to fix service groups than services. You see, exactly the same sort of things. Nothing new in here. So the next thing we have to go into is server settings. So I open up one of the servers. I got two, one SSL server, one HTTP server. So I open up the HTTP server. So you see, I got three services bound to it. There are some policies. There's a summary, of course. Same as we said with the, all the rest of the objects. So next I click on the pen and open up. So you see again, main properties like name, protocol are not editable, but you may change the server address. There's some more of main interest in it. Nothing to do in here. But we are interested in load balancing method. So this is a method we use for load balancing. Round robin, this is one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. Just stupid. Default is least number of connections, much more intelligent, least response time. Destination IP, so there are some hash-based ones, I skip them. Least bandwidth, least number of packages, both are very good for streaming. LRTM, least response time using monitoring. Custom load, there's a good white paper how to do it using uh, SNMP queries. And the least number of requests, of course. Also a good one. So the next thing we will add is persistence. Load balancing is not always what we want. So we may use a source IP for persistence. So always use the same server for same source IP address. 
we may change to cookie insert. So we put this cookie insert, we don't have a persistence table on Netscale, instead we store cookies on client. We have a backup persistence method, which is source IP. We have SSL session ID, we have rule-based persistence, we have several more persistence methods. So that's nice, but what will happen if all services are down? So we go into protection, we may in case of all services to be down, we may redirect somewhere, let's say to Google. So if all our services are down, we would redirect to Google. Or we may add a backup virtual server, one of our servers. Uh, this is below a method, so this is happens with backup virtual server. What happens if the virtual server is coming back on? So thank you guys. Hope to see you again very soon. Please also visit my blog, blog.nodes.id. Bye-bye.